scheduled to impact wrestling a show I was more interested than Raw on Monday. <laughs> no, I gotta say this. I'm not um I'm not the one that likes to say things like this, because it's not really something I like to do. I don't like to talk about how I feel about when people see my videos. Or I'm very happy people comment, but I normally don't say this, but I have to say thank you guys. You see, Monday, I was not interested in watching Raw. I did not even want to do that video because I was I was in one of those moments where the depression kind of grabbed me. And I, I wasn't really interested in doing it. I really didn't want to do it, but I felt like it was important to do it because I knew it would help me in some form. And I didn't expect any more than maybe 10 or 20 views on that video, and I got over 400 right now. I don't know what I did, but... Thank you, because it was a shock. I I didn't expect to get any more than maybe 10 views on the damn thing. I don't get that many views on Raw all the time, and even less on SmackDown. And I, I didn't care about Raw, but you guys did. And you guys seemed to like the video, because you saw it. So thank you. I, I just had to say it. I, I don't like talking like that. Because I don't want to think, sound like I'm full of myself or anything. Like, I had the greatest content compared to any YouTuber. It's just not me. But I just wanted to say thank you that you did see that my video was something you liked. Anyway, let's get into a real show. <laughs> I have to say it. I looked at this Impact Wrestling compared to this Raw. Raw was okay. SmackDown was angering. It pissed my ass off. But this show was good. You can see this show more than once, easily, and not be completely bored with it after the second time you saw it. You could actually see at least once or twice more. I would say once more. But let's get into the show. Now, I gotta say, I did not see the beginning of the show due to the fact there was not one stream that was up to see it. There was not one. The only one that was up was doing reruns of... WWE 24 about the Divas Revolution. I know it's a women's revolution, but pretty much they're trying to say we are way better than we used to be. Look at us. That's what the women's revolution feels in WWE right now. Not the women who are participating in it. It's the ones who are writing the show and the ones who think it's so good that you need to kiss their ass. But here, this was on and was pissing me off. But eventually someone did put the stream on and I did see it from there. I think it was 25 minutes later. Now, this is what we saw. I'm going to go to Allie. I am more interested in seeing Allie right now than I would be seeing Asuka. And that's saying a lot because I actually do like Asuka. But at least I get something interesting from Allie. But then you get Laura Van Ness messing with her saying last week... I'm a secret, secret admirer. This week she said, come to this place, you'll see me. Then she puts out chocolates for her. And then she comes out surprising her and Allie proceeds to kick her ass. Now you could say, what, why? why, why, why? Why you got to go there with Allie? Why you got to go there with Laura Van Ness? It seems like it's a waste. But I think if, if, if they're going where I think they're going, we could have something interesting. See it in disrespect. Laura Van Ness got hurt by Allie, even though Laura Van Ness hurt Allie by messing with Braxton Sutter, who I don't like because of how he was built. I know someone said earlier, I think on one of my previous videos, that I don't know what I'm talking about with Braxton Sutter dragging down Allie. I'm saying it in disrespect. I'm not saying Braxton Sutter sucks. I'm saying they've done nothing with him and his character sucks. Him as a performer, he looks like he can get the job done. But he has nothing done for him, so he just hurts Allie. That's the way I see it. Until they write for him, I don't want to see him with her. Even though it would probably work if they wrote for him. But, but, this is what I'm hoping for. Past Braxton Sutter in real life being with Allie. Let's see Allie, Law and Ness, in a relationship. I know you're going to say, what? This is the way it looks like it's going. Law Van Ness has nobody. 
She's been burnt by Braxton Sutter already. She's been burnt by Guido already. And she just can't take it anymore. So, what do you think should be done? She goes to a woman for solace. She goes to a woman for interest. So maybe she may go to Ali and they'll have a relationship there. That's what I'm hoping for. That's what I'm hoping for. And that will give us something interesting. A lesbian relationship. Nothing wrong with a gay or lesbian relationship in wrestling. You can do it. Now, let's move on to Hanaya versus Rosemary, which upset me so badly. In two ways it upset me. One, we already know Hanaya is not there. Unless she's going to resign again, she's not there. And look at this body. She's in my face. Those boobs are magnificent. I thought she was Native American. I'm taking it away. I thought she was Native American. I checked to see what she was. And she's actually Puerto Rican, Colombian, um, French, and Dominican. No, French descent and Dominican. That's a lot of mix-up. And she's a New Yorker. That makes her even more interesting. But she's not there anymore. So it upsets me. Then we had this match, which makes you think, you know what? They knew she was not going to stay, or they they booked her, and she. Th this is when she decided she didn't want to stay. Because the way she lost in this match was terrible. Both these women were performing pretty well. Until that damn roll up that looked so lame, it pissed my ass off. Then we got Hanaya. Beaten up on the lovely Rosemary, whose boobs are magnificent. Here's another picture in my face. Gotta say it. Gotta do it. There, she's gone. And guess what happens after she starts beating up on Rosemary? Rosemary proceeds to try and take a bite out of her, literally. And she just bites her arm. And guess what Rosemary says? Make sure you got your shots, honey. <laughs> I gotta say it was funny. But it's still upsetting. That maybe this might be the last taping of Hanaya. This might be it. Unless there's maybe a two or three more tapings left before she's gone. This is so upsetting that Hanaya is not there. She looks like she's a character that would be very flamboyant, very interesting, very fun. But she's not there now, so it hurts. That's just me. Now, um, I really didn't care that much about the LAX dealing with um, the situation and I I'll give it to you like this LAX really doesn't interest me when they do promo segments in the clubhouse they barely interest me at all when they're in the ring with Conan talking they're Santana and Ortiz are good performers but I'm bored with them because they don't talk and I'm gonna have to keep bringing this up until they allow them to talk because they don't talk, and it's so freaking frustrating. But next week, they're supposed to be going after Trevor Lee. And I think they're going after Trevor Lee. I'm, I believe so. Trevor Lee and uh, Connolly. I, can't, I keep forgetting his name. But in the end, I think it's Kenneth Connolly. But in the end, you got that. And then you got the, the cult of Lee after that, later in the night. And pretty much thinking that LAX is going to mess with them. So they start messing with everybody else. Including two guys who are in the mask. And just beat the crap out of them. And realize they're not even Spanish. One of them's white. Or <laughs> stupid. But. At least the cult of Lee is still going. The promo beforehand. The, the, the running around and seeing if anyone was messing with them. Seeing Bala Ba eating something in a corner. That was funny. And I'm alright with that. Keep it up with the cult of Lee. They're good. Now, here's something that was a surprise. Tag match. You got D. Seidel and the Johnny versus EC3 and Tyrus. What? A male fully grizzled with a mustache and beard Tyrus. Tyrus always had a bit of a, uh, like a goatee. Now he is fully grizzled. The man is back. But here's the thing. And I know a lot of people want to say, oh my gosh, the fucking stupid jobber's back. And I got to say this. The only reason a person's a jobber is because they're not pushed to find out if they have talent. Not a lot of people are going to say, they, you can see when a jobber has no talent. No, not all the time. 
There's a lot of times that jobbers do have talent, but they're ordered to act a certain way. Tyrus has never had one actual big storyline to really see if the guy can actually do the job. He had one moment when he could have had what was um what was it um the quest for gold I can't remember it um I forgot the name of the one where he had a chance to get the title but they shortened that shit out really quickly because they wanted to do something with what was it um it wasn't with, it was with EC3 dealing with somebody so they got Tyrus out of the way really quickly so we really didn't see if he could actually do something so I'm saying this, give Tyrus a chance to see if they give him a storyline, that's if. He gets no storyline, he's just going to be the same old way, and who's going to give a damn? But if they give him a real storyline, so he has to actually show that he can do it, then you can say, this guy's a piece of shit. Or then you can say, okay, this guy actually has ability. Until they actually give him something to do, I'm always going to say we don't know what Tyrus is capable of because he's never had that freaking option. Because look what happened when he was in the WWE. They put him with the most stupidest gimmick of the Funkodactyls and the Funkosaurus. And guess what? He got over with it. Until they got mad that he got over with it and they got rid of his ass. I'm not saying that because I like him. I'm saying that because it happened. Anyway, the match of the night for me was Phantasma versus Ishimori for the X Division title. Now, it was a damn good match. Finally, you get to see an X Division match, not at the beginning of the show. Normally, if it's a, ti a title match, beginning of the show. This time, it was near the end of the show. Which I say, thank you, thank you, thank you. And guess what? Compared to the WWE with Corey Graves, with Michael Cole, because I can't stand either one of them. They both get on my nerves to a certain extent. You hear Sean, Sanjay Duff. He may not be the best color commentator there is. He does sound a little bland. His voice does sound monotone to a certain extent. A little bland. That's what other people would see. Me, personally, I don't get tired of his voice. In fact, because he gives blow by blow what's going on in the freaking ring, I see more enjoyment. You didn't get that with JB. You didn't get that with Josh, who's been doing the stupid banter between, him, between each other, which it's tolerable with him and Josh, because JB is now in NXT, I believe. But when you see this situation with Sanjay Duff, if anyone complains about Sanjay Duff, think about it for a minute. When do you hear anyone in a major promotion, and Impact Wrestling is a major promotion, blow by blow commentary what's going on in the freaking ring? What happens when you get a suplex from the top ring rope? What happens when you get thrown from the top ring rope? What happens when... You get into a certain hammerlock, to a certain muscle buster, to a certain brain buster. He tells you what's it like because he's dealt with them. So I enjoyed it. For me, I enjoyed that. That, that, that made my day. His commentary is good. I enjoy it. Now, um, Moose and Alberto El Patron had a little fight. That was probably due to what happened in the beginning of the show. Since I couldn't see it because there was no stream, I can't really comment on what happened. Now, of course, I can see a, see when the video finally comes out on one of the sites. I can get a look at it. But as it comes right now, I can't really comment on it because I don't know exactly what happened. They did say that Moose messed up a, 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 um, AEP because he was going to get a title shot. So I can't really say it was the right thing to do or not. I can't. So last but not least, Eli Drake. He's in my face. He's in my face. He's in my face. That's my boy. That's my boy. Next to seeing, and I'm taking it away, next to seeing Tank Top Girl. If anyone ever thought I didn't see her, I did see Tank Top Girl. She was wearing a white top, puffy hair, a cute, dark-skinned young lady. Beautiful. Gorgeous girl. Unfortunately, could not get a shot of her. It was impossible to get a shot. And if I do have a shot, I already have it in my face. But I know I couldn't get one. But in the end, I saw her and I saw Eli Drake in a match that was easily the second best match of the night. Now, the only reason it wasn't the top match of the night was because of the outcome. For me, 
outside my own feelings, it was the best match of night for me personally. It was not. It was the second best match. But what did we get? We got a very good, very, not just high impact match, but a very strategic match from Eli Drake and D double A D as I'm going to call him title man. That man has how many freaking titles? He's got four freaking titles from somewhere in Japan, from the UK, and some other titles along with ours. Damn! Double A, you've been busy, son. And that makes me happy to see something like that. When you see someone that's that good, it makes you angry on what the WWE did to him. Because when you see this situation with this match, you got both of them being very... Great ring generals. I've always said I waited for Eli Drake to show that he was a ring general. And he is a ring general. He showed how versatile he is. And when it's time to pull out a move that he hasn't done in a while. Or he's never done. He can do it and make it look good. Or make it look bad when it fails. So it was beautiful seeing Eli Drake do his business with a great ring general in the Austin Aries. And it makes me so angry that WWE did nothing with him. There's a reason why he left. But in the end, Austin Aries won. And it upsets me that Eli Drake had to lose. Because I'm going to be honest here. As much as I love them both. I love Eli Drake. I love Austin Aries. But Eli Drake right now had way too much steam. Yes, he hasn't been booked that well. He hasn't been seen a lot, but he is a champion that I love because he has the best gimmick. I am the name of dummies, and I'm Eli Drake. No one can bother me. Yeah, yeah, I'm a, you're nothing but a dummy. Yeah, that guy has charisma out his ass. And having his partner by his side only talking when it's necessary made it even more fun with a Chris Adonis. But now having Austin Aries as a champ, I'm worried about Eli Drake being dropped. And I don't want to see him dropped. I wouldn't mind seeing him turn face and see how he'll act as a face if they book him good as a face now that we have new management. Was this a good show? Yes. You can easily see it more than once. I know most people will see it maybe one more time. A few diehard fans may see it twice, particularly... The Ishimori and Phantasma match, as well as for the Eli Drake and Austin Aries match. Those are the two matches I recommend to watch. The other ones, okay, Rosemary and Hanai will piss you off a bit because of how it ended in that stupid roll-up. And, and, and Hanaya just looked like a bitch. And it angered me. And you know what? To make up for that, that, that it hurts me. Here she is in my face with those beautiful breasts. That girl really needs, and I take her away, that girl really needs to change her top because her boobs cannot live in that top. It's killing them. She needs to wear a top that is a little bit more minimizing and less revealing so she can breathe because those boobs look like they're saying, I'm dying, release me. That's just me. I'm so sorry. That sounded so sexist. I hope I didn't sound sexist. I'm just, she's beautiful, and I like to see her more respected. If she's not being respected because her boobs look so hot. Have a good day. Have a good night. Peace.